I agree with Marie. Okay, so what questions do we have? Who has a question about the quiz? Um, okay, let's take a look at question number five. Question number five. It says we have the vector negative three, negative two, and we are going to find its direction and magnitude. <laughs> magnitude is easy. <laughs> Root 13, right? Nine plus four? Direction. Well, let's see. If I draw a picture of this vector, it's over three. Down to, so it would look like this. That's a picture of it. This is its direction. Now, I have a little right triangle here. I know this is three and this is two. Could I find this angle? And I would find that angle by doing second tangent two thirds. I'll call that theta. And theta will be second tangent two thirds, mm -hmm. right, Delaney? Yeah. That's going to give me this. So then I will add 180 to it, and that will be my direction. Okay. Anybody else have a question about the quiz? Vector is a directed line segment. A directed line segment. No, I, I don't think so. I can't remember. You said a line segment going in or not. A directed line segment. Half points. Directed line. Three. Number three is kind of the opposite of the one we just did. Three says, I know the magnitude and I know the angle. I need the components. Kids, components, components and coordinates are the same thing. We are looking for the X and the Y that will create this triangle. So how did we do that? Yep, we use sine and cosine. So the cosine of 62 equals x over 10. x equals 10 cosine 62. Uh, sine 62 equals y over 10. So y equals 10 sine 62. So I just type these into my calculator, and that's my x and my y. Ma'am, well, we're not chewing gum yet again, are we? Yeah. You looked straight at me when you said that. I was like, what? Oh. <laughs> all right, so that's our X and our Y. Okay, so type those in and write them down right here. Harry. Can we do number 1A and B? To find the measure of an angle, Given just some random points, what's the first thing we need to do, Harry? What? You what's get the, the two little A, you can go to, you get the A to B and the A to C. I need the vectors, that's yes. right, because we're going to find angle A. So the vectors that create angle A are A, B, and A, C. So that has to be my beginning point. I need to find the coordinates of those vectors. So. From A to B would be from A to B, negative 4, 1. And from A to C, 4, negative 6. Now what do I do? Then you like get the, whatever it's called when it's under the square root, the matrix. Not the point, magnitude. The magnitude or something. So the magnitude of AB would be root 17. 
square, square, add them up, take the square root. Or you could do the distance formula if you wanted to. And the magnitude of AC is the square root of 52, 16 and 36. That's what I got. Okay, so then what? So far, so good. Well, then you like, I don't really know at this point. If you times the numbers or something and add them up. We find it's the movie. dot product. The dot product of these two vectors will equal magnitude times magnitude times cosine. You've already found the magnitude, Mary. She asked me a question. I got distracted. You've already found the magnitudes, root 17 and root 52. And we can find the dot product because you found the coordinates of the vector. So the dot product would be negative 16 plus negative 6. You multiply, multiply, add. So that's negative 22. So negative 22 over the square root of 17 times 52 is the cosine of the angle. How would I get the angle then? You gotta Second do the cosine. Second cosine, right? Yeah, I turn that on. And that's gonna give me the angle, which is, I don't know, the quiz I'm looking at missed it. What is that angle? 137.73. Okay. So there's the angle. So now the second part of that question says, find the area. Now having done that right there, you could say one half side times side times sine of the included angle. So we don't want to do, we don't want to type this in, we'll just say sign answer. And that'll give you your answer. I also showed you a little trick where you could do the determinant of this matrix, which would be 24 minus 4 divided by 2, so the area is actually 10, which is exactly what you get when you do this. Bravo. You should have used one half root 52 root 17 sign answer. Because the last thing we would have put in is this right here. Oh. And you can take the sign of the answer. All right. Anything else? Harry, you got that? Yeah. Anything else on the quiz? Okay, let's look at our pre-quest then. Anything there that you had a question about? I gave you the answer so you could check. Anybody find anything on the pre-quest? Uh, Maggie. Number 14. 14? You never do. Okay, so work <coughs> is force times distance times cosine of angle between. All right, so let's let's find that angle first. Let's find the angle first. Which direction is the distance in? What's the direction <coughs> of the distance? We're moving an object. <coughs> How is the object moving? Is it going up? Now, I didn't say the distance. I said, you're, okay, listen carefully. We, in this problem, we have a force and a distance. We need to find the angle between them, okay? Forget the numbers. What direction is the force in? Uh, well, okay, yeah, we'll start with that. Number. So what, what direction is the force in? Right to 
up three. It tells me in the problem that the force <coughs> has a slope of three halves. Here's the force. Over two, up three. It tells me that in the problem. What direction is the movement in, the distance? Okay, not the, not the, I don't, I don't want to know how long it is. I want to know what direction. Is it up and down? Well, what direction is it? That's right. Where's the point zero zero and where's the point z um, six zero? Where are those two points? Right six. Here's zero zero. Here's six zero. Which direction is this thing moving? Positive six. Horizontally, not. Okay. I want everybody's little eyes focused on me. In order to find the work, it's very simple. I don't know how it's getting complicated. You need to know the magnitude of the force, you need to know how far you're moving the object, and you need to know the angle between the force and the distance movement. We are finding this first. The other two are given in the problem. We're finding this so we can answer the question. Here is the force. It tells me in the problem I'm going over two and up three. Here is the distance. It tells me in the problem I'm moving sideways, I'm moving horizontally. This is the angle I need. The angle that is between my force and my distance. Now, this will not always be horizontal. Could it be vertical? Yes. Could it be at a slant? Yes. This particular one, the object is moving horizontally have to read the question. Now, how am I going to find this angle? Going over two and up three. How am I going to find that angle? I'm going to do second tangent, three halves. So type that in on your calculator. And tell me what the angle is that's between those two things. Fifty-six point something. Okay. Now, what do I need to know about that angle? If I'm going to do this calculation, I need to know it's angle. I got the angle. What do I need to know about it? Cosine. So I'll take cosine answer. Now, I need to multiply that times the magnitude of the force. What is the magnitude of the force? Ten. Ten times the distance that the object is moving. How far is the object moving? Six. So you're going to take the cosine of this angle that you just found, and you're going to multiply it basically by 60. And that will be the answer to the question. And I gave you the answer so you can check and see if you did it right or not. Let's look quickly on pre-quest two. <coughs> and the very first problem is the equivalent of that. On pre-quest two, the very first problem. So work is force times distance times cosine of angle between. All right, so let's find the angle. <coughs> what do I know about what's going on this time? Okay, we're on three plus two looking at problem number one. It's horizontal again. The distance is horizontal. And what about the force? What's the direction of the force? over three up one. So here's my force, here's my distance. Can I find this angle? How do I find that angle? Second tangent, one third. Okay, now what do I do with that? 
that angle. Now you have this. If you've typed this in, you have this angle now. What do you need to do with it? Put cosine. You need to take its cosine. And then you're going to multiply that by what two other numbers? The magnitude of the force. Magnitude of the force, which is? Ten, square root of ten. Ten. Not the square root of ten, just ten. The magnitude is ten. And the distance is? Sixteen. So you're going to take the cosine of the angle you found times 160. For force, you just have to do the magnitude times the three and the ones. Just multiply the magnitude. No, 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 no. The magnitude of the force is given in the problem. Oh. The magnitude of the force is 10. So how do you get 10 to the last one? It wasn't given The 10, the 10 yeah, that's what I was looking at. It's not 10, it's 13. <laughs> the magnitude of the force of three and two. No, 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 no. Okay, no. Now listen. See, you're not reading the problem. Uh, now I'm back on prequest one. It says I have a ten-pound force. The magnitude of that force, of the magnitude, is ten. Period. So it tells me right okay. there, a ten-pound force. It's in the direction. 2, 3. It does not say that 2, 3 is the force vector. All I know is that's the direction of the force vector. Do you see the difference? Yeah. you got to read it. If you put cosine second answer, will you get a different answer? Like, for the final? Instead of finding cosine, you just put cosine of the angle. Well, we have to find the angle by using second tangent. So that it's cosine answer. That's what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. You need to find the angle, but then you need the cosine of it. Yeah. Just the cosine answer. Okay, so now I'm back on prequest one, number 17. Which is a calculator question, which <coughs> when I type this in on my calculator, I have to do it like this. Okay, so what bothered you about this, Heidi? Um, I couldn't figure out how to graph it, or I typed it in, so it didn't like show up on my calculator. Okay, well, first of all, what mode do we need to be in? Parametric. We need to be in parametric because these are parametric equations. I am in radians, so I'm going to set my uh, t min and max at 0 and 2 pi. My x min and max, just because I don't know what else to do, I'm going to leave it standard negative 10 and 10. And then I'm going to type in my equations and see what happens.
All right. Anybody else find something on request one? Read order. Oh, number six. I understand they got negative four and three. But you also have five on the answer and I don't know that. All right, so I need three Bs, so three Bs, and minus U. So that would be negative three, nine. So that would give me negative four, three, as what happens if I take three B minus U? What do these bars mean? What's the magnitude of a vector that goes left or up and right? Okay, who else? Anything else on that you tried last night on the prequest? Anna? 20? We just, I just did this for somebody on the quiz, Anna. This is exactly the same as your quiz question. Number 20, as it says, we got a triangle. We got three points. Zero. Five. And we want to find angle A. So what are the steps we go through to find an angle in this kind of situation? T-step. We have to find the vectors first. We don't even have the vectors. So we need to find the vectors first. And if it's angle A we're after, we're going to do A, C, and A, B. So what are the coordinates of A, C from A to C? Harry Payton, you should be paying attention to this. This is a question you asked. Yeah, he was helping me because I can't figure out my calculator. A, B would be 2, 1. Uh-oh, this is a special one. What's the dot product? I know I'm going to be doing a dot product. Zero. The dot product. Zero. 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 And what did I tell you if the dot product is zero? It's, it's orthogonal. Uh, and what does orthogonal mean? It's perpendicular. If this is perpendicular, then what's the measure of that angle? 90, 90 degrees. 90 degrees. That was a special one. Everything. I'm like, 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 i All right, which one? 18. 18B <laughs> says compare the vectors 3, 4, and 4, 3. I want to know if they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither. What do you think about these two? Parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Neither. Neither. What's the slope of this one? Four thirds. What's the slope of this one? Three fourths. If they're parallel, they got to match. If they're perpendicular, they have to be opposite, opposite reciprocals. reciprocals. These are neither one, so they're nothing. <coughs> All right, now John has looked ahead and has a question about prequest two. Number two. Prequest two, number two. We already did number one. <laughs> All right, who remembers? We did one of these in class. Who remembers what our strategy was? We draw a picture of each vector independently, keeping in mind that a bearing of 215 would actually look like this, right? <laughs> I 
and the magnitude is three tenths. We need to know the components of that vector. This is the airplane, and we need to know his components. Here he is flying. We need to know the x and the y. All right, how am I even going to begin that? Well, you're going to figure out the angle. I'm going to figure out the angle, and that's going to be easy because this is 270, so this would have to be 55. I need X and Y. This was a question somebody asked before. Sine so and cosine. Sine and cosine. So we'll say cosine 55 equals X over 310. So X is going to be 310 cosine 55. I type that in on my calculator. And Y is going to be 310 sine 55, right? So I can type that in on my calculator. But... What do I have to be careful of? Look where this vector is. Negative y. Negative x and negative y, right? Yeah. They're both negative. Okay, somebody have those numbers Plus for me? Thank you. Okay. So there are the components of the airplane. You absolutely could use the law of signs. Absolutely. <coughs> okay. All right, now what? <coughs> now we start all over again, only we do the wind. So the wind has a bearing of 160. So here's, here's the wind. Magnitude 62. So here's my right triangle. This is the wind. I need to know the x and the y for the wind. Alright, so let's start like we did before. What's this angle? 70. So we can find the law signs alert. I'll use Sokotoa. So cosine 70 equals x over 62. So x equals 62 cosine 70. And y will equal 62 sine 70. Now be very careful. Your x is positive, but your y is going to be negative. Anybody have an x value for me? 62 cosine 70? And a y value? Alright, so so far we haven't even done, even looked at answering the question. So far all we've done is find the components for each of our vectors. Now, we want to know the actual speed and direction of the airplane. So basically, we need to know what happens when you put these two together, right? So let's find the resultant. And what does resultant mean? So what would the coordinates of the sum be? Well, just add your x's and add your y's, real simple, and what do we get? So that means that the actual course of the airplane is over here, over 156.61 and down 312. <coughs> this will be his actual magnitude. Can we find that? Sure. 
Can we find his speed? Yes. So we would square that number and square that number, add them together and square root, and that's going to give me his actual speed, which is what? The negatives are going to square out, so please don't put any negatives in there. What is it? What is it? So 349.27. So the plane is actually flying at a speed of 349.27 miles an hour. Now we need his actual direction. It says find the speed and direction. So here's his speed. This will be his direction. Well, what do we need to figure out? That angle right there, right? And how can we find that? You, <coughs> you have a 90. You could do the law signs. I'm going to work. I'm going to go ahead and just do tan, second tangent, but the law signs will work. So we're going to get that number. What is that? So 63 point something. That is not the direction. This is the direction. So how will we actually get the direction? 270 minus that. So it should be 206 point something. 0.64. So it said, what is his actual speed? Well, it's 349.27. What is his actual direction? 206.64. Okay, skim down through the rest of pre request number two. This is your homework. You want to make sure you can do all of these. Does anything there look like you might not be able to do it? Okay, this is 160. This is 90. Okay. Right? Okay. Or, yeah, that's probably this way. So, if it's like turning to like north and that's your direction, you go clockwise. Mm -hmm. Every time. Every time. Let's look back then. Yesterday we had started an in-class review sheet. I don't remember. I don't think we finished them all. It's in your packet it's called in-class review. I asked you to keep track of which ones you've done. I have no idea. But we want to make sure we can do all of these. Anybody see something there that you have a question about? We have 12 minutes to take care of any questions you have before you have to take this quest on Monday. We haven't done seven yet? Okay, we haven't done seven yet. And actually, we kind of just did it here with all this stuff. Because what seven is asking you to find are the x and the y for this vector, this vector right here. Find the x and the y. So how do we do that? Components, coordinates mean x comma y. How do we find them? Sine and cosine. So, or some of you want to, some of you might use the law signs or something. That's okay too. I would say sine 28 equals y over 6. So y equals 6 sine 28, <coughs> and x is going to equal 6 cosine 28. Type these into your calculator. Make sure they're in the right order, x double y, and that's your answer. <coughs> Do you see that's exactly what we did with the airplane and the wind? 
Nine. Yeah, we've done this one a couple of times today, too, in a little bit different context. How do we find the angle between two vectors? What pops into your head when I say angle between two vectors? Dot product. Dot product. Dot product. Dot product. Dot product. Equals magnitude times Cosine. magnitude times cosine, right? Mm -hmm. So here we go. What's the dot product? Well, let's see. The vectors are negative 2, 7, and 1, 2. So what would their dot product be? Negative 2 plus 14. So the dot product is 12. What's the magnitude of the first vector? Square root of 53. What's the magnitude of the second vector? Square root of 5. Cosine of the angle between them is what we don't know. So 12 over the square root of 53 times 5 is the cosine of the angle. So I go to my calculator and second cosine. And that will give me the angle. This is exactly what we did with those triangle problems. The only difference is here they give you the vectors. You didn't have to figure them out. Ten. Who remembers how to find the parametric equations for the line through two given points? What problem is this? Start with the vector form. Yep. What problem is this? The first part is the difference. We have to plug something into these two parentheses. What goes in the first part? One of the points. So negative one. Which one? I'll just put negative one, five. Either point. That position is a point on the line. Any point on the line. And then what goes into the second slope parentheses? The slope. How the line moves. So we're going from negative 1, 5 to 2, 4. So from negative 1 to 2 is 3. And from 5 to 4 is negative 1. Now, that's not the answer, though. This is the vector representation of the line. We're <coughs> supposed to have the parametric <coughs> equations, which are x equals and y, y equals. So what does x equal? Negative 1 plus 3t. And y equals 5 minus t. Now, could your equations look different than that and still be right? Yes, because remember, what goes in this first blank? Any point on the line. How many points on the line are there? Well, there's two that we know of, but there's a ton more, right? There are lots of possibilities for this first parenthesis. Um, we're talking about AC, but I don't see any. You don't even see a bag. Yeah, I didn't see any points on that. So let's just say A is um, 3, 6, and B is 7, 2. I'll just make those up because we have to have a problem. So what would the coordinates of vector A, B be? Given this A and this B, what would the coordinates of the vector be? 4, negative 4. Now what would that be? That Those are his components, <coughs> or his coordinates. What would that be in terms of i and j? 4i minus 4j. 3. 3, we've kind of done several of these today. We have the vector negative 5, 1. So if I do a picture of it, it would look like this, over 5 out of 1. 
this is its direction angle. Remember, we're all, unless it's a plane flying navigation type problem, we're always measuring from here. So this is the answer. But I'm probably not going to find that first. What am I going to do first? Find that. Second tangent one-fifth will be that angle right there. And then what will I do with it to get the actual answer? 180 minus. 180 minus that will be the answer. So whatever second tangent one-fifth is, get that number and then subtract it from 180 and that will be the direction angle. Any vector whose slope is going to be the same as that. So you're going to put this over this and get that. So maybe negative six and two. Would that be an option? Any, there are billions of them. But you just want the slopes to match, the ratio to match. When you're trying to use the same direction, like number one, and then you put it over the magnitude, um, should you leave it like that, or do you have to put the, okay. Okay, I'm looking at pre-quest two, I've already done one and two, and now I'm looking at three. <laughs> Who remembers how to do this? <laughs> uh, directions to eliminate the parameter and write an equation. So what do you think? We can do T by itself. Up here, let's see, if we got t by itself, <coughs> would that be x minus 2? I don't want to, no, 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 2 minus x. <coughs> yeah, I don't want to do too much at once. So this is what t equals. So I can plug it in right here. So y equals 3 plus 2 times 2 minus x. Cleaning up a little bit, it looks like negative 2x plus 7. So what were these? These were parametric equations for a <coughs> line. Uh, All right, for Monday then, you have pre-quest number two to do. If you didn't do pre-quest number one, you'll want to take care of that too. If I don't have your Sam Austin's parents' permission, please email your parents right now and ask if it's in the seat. It's cool. Oh, is this happening? No, it's fine. That's what I need. Oh, God. It's like right now. I haven't watched it. I'm excited. You're an auctioneer. I'm an auctioneer. I don't know. I auction on one of the things. This is kind of a sport auction. Do you know what you're wearing, right? Stock track. Overall. Is it Sam Rock? Okay. 
Any more permission slips or t-shirt order forms? I hear you laughing. Like after you said it. It's literally in the first like 15 seconds. What day? Is it how many data funds? I'm going to hop in the end of this one. Two. Two. Oh,